Hey guys, I hope you're all okay and had a lovely weekend. Thank you so much for all that extra work that you're doing and sending in. It really is great to see. Harry, well done on your amazing maths work that you've done. I really liked the PE video that you sent in, especially that special move called the bond. I'm going to have a go at that and I'll show you next time you are in school. Thank you for that. Macy, well done on everything you've done. I love the photos that you sent me, especially the one of you and your friends on their bikes. Looked like you had a brilliant time. Freddie, well done on everything you've been doing. I love the photos, especially the delivery of caterpillars that you've got, which have now turned into butterflies that you've released. Well done, that was really lovely to see. Evie, so much work for you from you this past week, but my favourite part was you reading a bedtime story to Rue. It was great fun and well done for doing it. Louis, thank you for all the work you've been sending in and you, Alyssa, it was really great to look through. Miss Jones is thrilled. Matty, thank you for what you've sent in, your extra coding work as well, well done. Jake, amazing writing, well done on everything you wrote, and Belle and Alexia as well, thank you for sending in all of those things, it's been really lovely to look at. Now, Miss Jones did last week's video, and I've noticed she's got to this page here, so I'm going to just read that one again so we know where we are, and then we're going to see what happens next. Okay. When he was almost too tired to climb anymore, Jack reached the top of the beanstack way up in the clouds. Jack looked around. To his amazement, he saw an enormous castle with its great door wide open. He tiptoed inside. It was the most incredible place he has ever seen. Now that is high, especially to climb. It looks like a stack of baked bean tins. Jack wandered from room to room. He found massive bedrooms with carpets as thick as snowdrifts, a solar heated jacuzzi, a living room with great armchairs and a TV screen the size of a cinema. Wow, sounds like Miss Jones's house. At last, Jack wandered into a wonderful kitchen fitted with every kind of gadget. Look, some brilliant ones on there as well. Jack was interested in cooking and he climbed up to look at the giant sized microwave. Suddenly the whole castle began to shake. A great voice roared. Now before I do the roar, can you see Jack? He looks terrified, doesn't he? Fee fi fo fum. I've got a giant pain in my tum. And there he is. Jack looked around in alarm and saw an enormous giant sitting at a table, rubbing his stomach and looking very miserable. It's not fair, complained the giant. All I ever get to eat is children. And now I've got bellyache. Hot kids, cold kids, warm kids, kids on toast, kid puddings, and on Sundays, for a special treat, I have kid surprise. But that's just kids with kids on top. I'd give anything for a change. Unbelievable. Oh, hello, Mr. P. Hello, Mr. Morris. How are you? Hey, Come hi. and say hello. <laughs> Every time. Every I don't know. time. I have no idea where this is going on. This is. Completely. You're meant to be teaching, uh, you know that, right? <laughs> We've got a tech problem. That's why. Okay, well, you can stay in here. I'm going to continue with my book, okay. if you would like to. I have kid surprise, but that's just kids with kids on top. I'd give anything for a change. I'm sick and tired of kids. If I never ate another, ki if, if I never ate another kid as long as I live, it would be too soon. Ah, <sighs> he looked down at Jack. And now I've got to eat you too. It's not fair. The giant reached out a huge hairy hand and grabbed Jack around the waist. He lifted Jack, kicking and struggling, into the air and opened his vast black cave-like mouth with a tongue like a huge purple carpet. Well, Jack thought, this is the end of Jack, uh, Daft Jack and no mistake. He was just about to be crunched into a million tiny daft pieces when he suddenly had an idea. Er, uh, 
Excuse me, Mr. Giant, he whispered nervously. If you eat me, it will only make your tummy ache worse. I can think of something much nicer. I don't suppose you like beans, do you? Beans, roared the giant. Do I like beans? I yummy, yummy love them. Oh, the giant looks quite happy at the moment. So Jack took the giant by the hand and led him down the beanstack. And on the way, the giant told Jack how lonely he was all by himself in the great big castle in the clouds with nothing to do but eat people. There he is going down the beanstack. Jack began to feel very sorry for the poor giant and took him home to meet his mum. Oh, Jack, she cried, wherever have you been? Jack's mum was very pleased to see Jack in one piece. But when she saw the giant, and when the giant saw Jack's mum, it was love at first sight. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I'm going to marry Daft Jack's mum. Of course you are, dear, said Jack's mum. But first you must be hungry after your long journey. The giant looked at the beanstack gleaming in the evening light and he licked his giant lips. Fee, fi, fo, oh, sorry. Fum, fo, fee, fi. I want a giant sized baked bean pie. He began munching the beans, not one tin, not two tins, but the whole stack of beans, and he didn't even stop to open the tins. I've never heard a giant say that in that order before. So Daft Jack's mum married the giant and they were very happy. They all went to live in the giant's wonderful, ca wonderful castle in the sky. Daft Jack opened a cafe in the giant's kitchens and he called it Daft Jack Sky Snacks. And people came from far and wide and Jack grew rich and happy. He served everything you can think of except milk and beans. Well, that is the end of our story. Thank you so much for listening to me today. We will have a brand new book tomorrow. In fact, I'm going to go and find one now. Have a brilliant day, guys, and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.